Hello, in this video we're in the multiple linear regression setting and we're going to talk about the studentized residuals. This is part one of two. We're in the linear model setting, so this is our model, y is equal to x beta plus some the, you know epsilon or error term. And we're going to assume that the errors are multivariate normal with mean zero and covariance matrix sigma squared i. Now the residual is an is a sample estimate for this error term. So if we subtract this piece over, we get something like this, but we have to estimate the unknown beta parameter. And then this is what's called a residual. And then in, uh, then this right here is the hat matrix, the fitted value, which is eight, the hat matrix times y. We can write factor out a y, and the residuals are represented like in this matrix form. Now from previous video 49, so this is a video in a playlist I have called Generalized Linear Models Regression. And in the 49th video of that series, we showed that the residuals are multivariate normal with mean zero and covariance matrix sigma squared times i times h, where h is the hat matrix. So if we wanted just one of the residuals, say the ith residual, it's going to be normal with, with uh, mean zero and variance. You know, we, we have to pick off the i diagonal, which would be this. Sigma squared, 1 minus hii, where this is, hii is the i diagonal matrix of, the, of this. Now, to standardize the residuals, so this is a residual, and to standardize it, we divide by the standard deviation and that's called a standardized residual. <laughs> now to studentize it, we estimate this population variance with the sample variance. And so this piece is this piece where we use S that from our data, which is the square root of the mean square error. Now it's called a studentized residual. And now most people think, oh, you just estimate that with the sample variance or the sample standard deviation, and then this magically becomes a t-distribution. Well, in this case, it's not the case. It's not a t-distribution. Now, the top is a standard normal, and you can show the bottom is a chi-square divided by degrees of freedom, or the square root of that, which sort of makes you think it's a t-distribution, but the reason that it's not, the numerator and the denominator are not independent. So it's not technically a t-distribution. Now, it's t-like, and you can use this and kind of pretend like it's a T, um, but it's not. But that's actually what we deal with in part two is we change this just a little bit to make it a T distribution. Now, this is you'll hear the term internalized studentized residual. And the reason is this. We're looking at the ith residual. We use the ith diagonal element of the hat matrix. And in this estimate of the standard deviation, we use all the data, including the ith observation. So it's called internalized. Now, in part two, for our estimate of S, we use all the data except for the ith observation. So here it's the ith observation, ith observation, but th this is an estimate of the variance without using the, the ith observation. And that's called an externalized studentized residual. And actually, both of these are R commands. Um, this one here is called R standard. And then R student is the externalized studentized residual. So anyway, um, that may make more sense when we get to part two. Now, from previous video 39, we showed that the i diagonal of the hat matrix is always between 1 over n and 1. And when when the i diagonal is close to one, then the i set of regressors are far from the center, you know, the mean of all the components. And the set, the i set of regressors, think of the i row of the design matrix. That's the i set of regressors. Now, when the, uh, the HII or the hat matrix diagonal is close to zero, that says the set of regressors are close to the center. And that becomes important when we deal with influential diagnostics, which we'll get to eventually. So here's an illustration. 
um, will EI, so the normal residual, or the studentized residual, be more extreme in the case that I'm getting ready to show you. So I'm, I'm covering this up for a second. So here we have we have a set of data and then we have an observation that doesn't quite follow this trend and we fit the model and then this has what's called high influence of this fit because you know you'd think that we'd want the model to be here but that observation is is pulling the model closer so this is the residual and then the studentized residual is this right but notice since the data point i put a little x there to distinguish it x is far from x bar which is here it tells me the i diagonal matrix the hat matrix is going to be pretty large closer to one which will inflate this internal studentized residual, right? So if this is close to one, one minus something close to it is actually really small. So then when you divide by that really small number, it makes this big, right? So it should inflate it. So in general, RI should be more extreme than this standard residual. Now the relationship between the uh, a studentized residual, it's technically internalized studentized residual, and the press statistic. Now, in previous video 48, we give more detail, great detail, about the press residual. So basically what it is looking at is we fit the model without the ith observation, then we try to predict the ith observation using the model that we use without the ith observation, and, and that's this. So it's kind of like leave one out prediction. And that's what that stands for, predicted error sum of squares. But in here, we, we, uh, we noted that this is actually equal to this. And this is a result that I find so darn intriguing that here it looks like to find the press residuals, we're going to have to drop an observation, fit the model, find that residual, and then repeat with all in observations. Well, it turns out we only need to fit the model once and then we can find each press residual using this formula. We found the variance of this press residual to be this, sigma squared over one minus HII, where this is the, you know, the ith diagonal of the hat matrix. And again, in more detail in previous video 48. So, so the estimator standard error of the press residual, you know, would be the, the, the square root of this. And since that's an unknown parameter, we estimate it. So we put in S and, and we get this. And again, S is the root mean square error. Now, um, so let's standardize the press residual. So we have the press residual divided by its standard deviation. So some might say we're studentizing the press residual and, that, and that's fine too. This was equal to this formula from up here that's the estimated standard error. Divide this out, we get this. But that's RI, the, the value we calculated on page one. So thus, standardizing either the normal residual or the press residual, and then of course, estimating sigma with S, yields the same thing, RI, okay? And, that, and that's in, quite intriguing, a little bit satisfying too. Now, here, the next result, is really the whole crux of, of part two. That notice in here, we said if it's an influential point, so it's far from the center of the data, this is going to be close to one, which is going to artificially inflate this. But what about S? And so here's a formula here. Okay, we're going to end up proving this, but we'll, we'll show what it means first. So S could be shown to be this, where this is the estimate of the model variance without observation i right and so that's the and that's called the externalized studentized residual when you plug this in for that but look at this right here this piece because this is going to be small so is this which means this is going to be large so this piece is sort of artificially inflating 
the estimate of the air variance if we use this one without, you know, with the ith observation, right? Another way to think about this is if we kind of back solve for this piece right here. So it's the estimate of the air variance without the ith observation can be shown to be this, and really it's this just back solve for it. But look what we're subtracting here. We're subtracting this sort of artificially inflated number. So this decreases, right? So if this decreases, it even makes this uh, m more sensitive to outliers. I mean, you know, the power will be higher. And so, and that's what we do. So, but first let's prove this and then in the video, and then we'll jump on to part two. Now, from previous video 48, we showed this inverse here. So th this is the design matrix without the ith row. That's what these represent. And it's the inverse. And that's equal to this, where the design matrix with all the uh, rows, and then, is, and then plus this. And this is the ith row of the matrix. So this is a one by k plus one vector. And the transpose would make this an n by one. That's the, the hat matrix. And then in this video, 48, we, the techniques that we use to show this, and actually I give a nice background too, it would be easy to show this. So this is a design matrix without the ith observations. These are the, the y vector without the ith observation is equal to this. So this is all the observations and we're subtracting out this ith observation. Now to me, when I first see this, you think, well, how, what? How can that be true? It doesn't make sense. But if you watch video 48 in this playlist, Generalized Linear Models Regression, you then you see this and you're like, oh yeah, that makes sense. But um, So we're going to assume this is true and let you go watch that just to keep the video at the right length. So since these two equal, we're going to multiply this piece times that and then this piece times this. So this over here is this. Then we take this times that, which is that, and then this times that, which is this. Now, um, this is the least squares estimate for beta without the ith observation. Um, when we multiply that to here, we get the least squares estimate for beta when all the observations are used. And then we take this times this piece which is what this is, and then we multiply it by 1 because we're going to add these later. Now over here, this times this is what this is. So we get this, that, this comes down, but this right here is the least squares estimate for beta. And then we take this times this piece, so this comes down, that comes down, but this right here and that is the I diagonal element of the hat matrix, and we get this. So now what we do is if we multiply this times one and then this times that, so the negative and negative make it a positive, and then that ends up canceling with this piece. And then we have, you know, the the when we take it times one and this left, and then we factor out what we can. So this comes down, this comes down. That piece, you know, times that cancels with this. This is factored out of both, the y. We're left with a y, and then um, that minus makes that a minus, and then we get this over that, okay? But this here is uh, the residual, right? Y value minus the fitted value, and so it's this. And now we're gonna stop with this a second and go to the formula that we're trying to prove. Now this is the um, mean square error without the ith observation. So we're dividing this by n minus one minus k plus one, which is n minus k plus two. So this is divided by n minus k plus two, this estimate. So when you multiply it times that, we're kind of canceling that. And it's really the sum of our data now we're going through all the data points except for the ith observation. And this is the model fit 
without the observation. So this is really, you know, it's the residual squared, and that's how we get an estimate of the air variance. Now, let's add the ith observation in here and then subtract it out. So like we're adding zero. And that's what we do here. So we sum from one to n instead of, you know, n minus one terms. And so, and then we replace the fit with this. Remember, this is the fit with, so we get the least squares estimate without the ith observation. And this is, the, of course, the jth row, which makes that the fit. Um, and then we have to subtract it out because we added it. Now here, we're going to substitute in this value here. Okay, So that x is times this, and then it's times that. And so that's what this represents. Right? So that x is right there and right there, you know, from here. And then we do the same thing over here. Now this piece is the residual, right? It's the data minus the fitted value. Uh, same way here. So that's... Um, and then this piece here, the the ith row and the jth row and the residual, this is the i jth element of the hat matrix. And this is the ith element of the hat matrix, ith diagonal of the hat matrix. So this is the ijth element. And remember, it's still, it's all still squared. Now we square it out. So we get squared, and then this times that, and that times that. That's why there's a 2 there, and we get this. So we take out the pieces that don't have a j in it, which is our index. This is over here, and the only thing with the index is the this. Um, here we multiply by 1 minus h and divide by 1 minus h, combine, and we get this. Of course, we square them, and it, and it factored this. Now, a few notes here before we move on. Um, if h times y is the fitted value, but if we but h times x is just x, so these two are equal, but this is h times the fitted value. So now if we subtract that over, in fact, left factor out on h, we get h times y minus the fit, which is h and the residual equals zero. So that means the jth row times this is equal to zero. So that's what this says. Well, that's this piece right here. So that's zero. Now from previous video 49 in this playlist, we showed that this sum squared is equal to the i diagonal, which is this piece. So we plug in what we know. So this comes down, that's zero, that's hi. Oh, so we have hi times this over this squared minus the, so we when you combine those, you get this. Now, this here, if we divide by n minus k plus one, that's the s squared, that's the mean square error. But of course, we can't just divide, we have to multiply by 1, so we multiply and divide by that same quantity, and we get this. But that's what we wanted to show, so the result follows. So this piece is equal to that. If you take this and set it equal to that, then the result follows exactly. Okay, so well, that's all I have for this video. Um, the next video uh, is still on studentized residuals. So I hope you enjoyed this. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.